Hallelujah. Well, let's lift our hands to the Most High God and begin to worship Him. Let's worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days. Bless His holy name. Give Him glory, give Him honor, give Him adoration. Bless Him. Give Him honor. Give Him adoration. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. There is none holy as the Lord, as the Lord. There is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. There is no holy as the Lord, holy as the Lord. Thank you, Father. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord. Hallelujah, holy. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord, holy is the Lord, holy, 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 Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. 
that fellow who is saying when will I share my own testimony daddy asked me to tell you by this time next month We will hear your testimony. Daddy, we welcome you into our midst tonight. We give you all glory, we give you all honor, we give you all adoration. Thank you for all you've done for us thus far. Thank you that thus far you have helped us. Thank you because we know you will continue to help us. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Tonight, Holy Spirit, please manifest your power. Reveal your glory. Do what you alone can do. Holy Spirit, please remember, this is a Holy Ghost service. Please take control. Let this night mark a new beginning. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Uh, let somebody shout hallelujah. You can shake hands with one or two people and tell them God will surprise you tonight and then you may please be seated except those who are born in the month of February if you are born in the month of February shout hallelujah My Father, my God, I commit your children born in the month of February into your hands. February, the second month of the year. And so, Lord, I'm asking for this, your children, everything in doubles. Double blessings. Double anointing. Double promotion double strength double testimonies double joy and let them serve you double in Jesus mighty name we have prayed Amen praise the Lord well at long last March is around the corner. As you know very well, March is the anniversary of the Holy Ghost service. And um, 
So we have special legal service beginning from February 29 and ending on March the 3rd. The theme will be on Eagle Swings. It's going to be one extraordinary time in the presence of the Lord. I give God the glory for all the testimonies we have heard tonight. And I thank God especially for that little child. You know, the devil is a very bad devil. And Jesus is a very good Jesus. How the parents got the invitation to bring the child for special prayers twice, that must be God. Because when, if you get that invitation once, you, you praise God. To get it twice shows clearly that the Almighty God has a very special interest in that child. I decree tonight every one of you in need of a second touch from the Almighty God. God will give you tonight. I thank God for the brother who got triple promotion. It proves that when God speaks, particularly from this altar, you better believe it. Triple promotion. May I prophesy to somebody else and say before the end of this year, you two will get triple promotions. <laughs> what the two brothers who testified first didn't tell you is that the two boys are the children of one of our pastors. And they are the only two boys he had. Going home after the Congress, and the enemy decided that he was going to finish both of them. But my God intervened. Let me decree tonight that every plan of the enemy to cause you sorrow shall be frustrated. I want to beg you not to expect that the Holy Ghost service of tonight will be the usual time. I believe God wants to start something new. Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Exodus 3, verses 1 and 2. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, 
and the bush was not consumed. But before I proceed further, I want to really, really appreciate all those who have ministered in song tonight, from the time of choruses, even to the time of the special numbers. You have been very good tonight. God bless you. And I thank God for my son who gave the first message. That was good. So thank you. And I'm led of the Holy Spirit to say thank you to the engineers. Because we are hearing it clearly tonight. I think we should give the Lord a big round of applause. For the engineers. Moses was on the mountain top on Mount Horeb. As we learned last month, God has also repositioned us, and uh, many of us are now operating from the mountain top. But the first thing he encountered on that mountain top is fire. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire. And you know very well According to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29. Thank you, Father. Daddy asked me to tell you, get ready because the fire will fall tonight. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29, Hebrews 12, verse 29, the Bible says, our God is a consuming fire. When you read 1 Kings chapter 19 from verse 11 to 12, 1 Kings 19 from verse 11 to 12, you will discover that fire is part of the advance guard of God. When God is about to visit, fire comes first. It explains Psalm 68 from verse 1 to 3. Psalm 68 from verse 1 to 3, where it says, Let God arise and his enemies will scatter. It, is, it went on to tell you that his enemies will be melting before him as wax will melt before fire. So you know fire is advanced guide for the Almighty God. And now tonight you need the fire of God to fall. You need the fire to fall because God cannot engage in any meaningful conversation with you until the fire of God has purified you. You need the fire to come to purify you. If you Pay attention to this song, the special song for this Holy Ghost service. Verse 1 says, God should purify us from all impurities, remove every iniquity. When you read Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1 to 8, Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1 to 8, 
it tells you that when Isaiah saw the Almighty God in all his glory, where the angels were crying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord God Almighty, and he took a look at himself and he saw how dirty he was. And he cried to God and said, Woe is me, for I'm undone. For I'm a man of unclean lips. An angel came and brought a coal of fire. He used it to touch his lips. It was only after that experience, after that kiss of fire, that the Almighty God could now say to him in verse 8, Who shall I say? Who will go for us? And then Isaiah said, I'm here, Lord. You can send me. You need to be purified. The fire that is going to fall tonight is going to be number one for purification. In Malachi chapter 3, from verse 2 to 4, Malachi 3, 2 to 4, the Word of God made it abundantly clear. Before he can even accept the offerings of the Levites, they needed to be purified. So you may want to write down your prayer points. Prayer point number one, of course, you want to thank God. My prayer point number two will be, Father, anything blocking my access to you, let the fire fall and consume it tonight. Anything blocking my access to you, let the fire fall and consume it tonight. You see, because the Bible says in Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2, Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2, he said, the hand of the Lord is not shortened that he cannot save. Neither is he heavy that he cannot hear. But your sin, your iniquity is blocking the way. So many a times we pray, we fast, and the problem remains. We wonder, oh God, why are you not answering my prayer? Whatever it is that is blocking your assets to God, may the fire of God fall tonight and consume them. Now, when there is fire on the mountain, and the fire falls. Several things will happen. And we will use the example in First King chapter 18, from verse 30 to 40. First Kings 18 from verse 30 to 40, as our case study tonight. You know the story. It happened on Mount Carmel. There was a competition between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Both were to present offerings to God and to not put fire under it. And uh, each one was to call on his God and the God that answered by fire is to be God. The prophets of Baal presented their own offering. 
They cried unto their God. Their God didn't answer because it was a dead God. And then when it was the turn of Elijah, he said that uh, in order that nobody will think that he has secretly put fire under his own sacrifice, he said he should drench the offering by several buckets of water until everybody was sure, even if there is a fire put underneath, with this, fire, with this water flowing, um, the fire will be out. Then he called on his God and fire fell. You and I will call on our God tonight and fire will fall. The fire will fall for those who said amen. Now when the fire fell, the Bible says the fire consumed the sacrifice. It went ahead and consumed the wood. And then it went ahead and consumed the rocks. And then it went further and consumed the earth around the place. And it went ahead and consumed the water. We're going to look at those one by one. When the fire falls, it means your offering has been accepted. God accepting your offering means He has accepted you. Genesis chapter 4, from verse 3 to 5. Genesis 4. From verse 3 to 5, you remember two brothers, Cain and Abel, both of them offered offerings to God. God accepted one and rejected the other. When God accepts your offering, automatically it means your prayer has been answered. No, I've never really taught you about offering. And the reason I, I don't know how to take an offering because um, there are people who are always looking for something to criticize. Particularly when they see a ministry like this, that the Almighty God is blessing. That's why I've not spent time talking about offering. And when God accepts your offering, it's a great privilege. He doesn't have to. God is not a beggar. Anything that he wants to do, he has more than enough to do it. If you believe that, say amen. amen. So when you offer him anything at all and he accepts it it means he has accepted you the worst time I have I mean, the time I've seen a man in sorrow a kind of sorrow that I've prayed to God I will never witness again was when the church was so young there was this rich man who had just joined the church and he came to the headquarters and brought us state-of-the-art equipment, PA system. I mean, in those days, our amplifier, we have to slap it before it will work. And then he brought brand new PA system came in flowing and were there, smiling and all of a sudden God spoke and said tell him to take away his gifts 
I don't want them. Now, if you're a pastor and you hear that kind of voice, if you don't know the voice of God, you say, Get behind me, Satan. And we, we stammered when we were telling him. Go, 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 God. God asks you to take away your, your gifts. He doesn't want them. Say what? Sorry, sir, that's what God said. The man said, God says he, he, he doesn't want my gift? Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. He went to one of the pillars in the church and began to bang his head against the pillar, weeping, sobbing. God rejects my gift. It means he has rejected me. I pray for every one of you here today. May God never reject your offering. When there is fire on the mountain, it means often have been accepted. It means you have been accepted. It means your prayer has been answered. Second Chronicles chapter seven, from verse one to three. Second Chronicles seven, from verse one to three. When Solomon offered an offering to the Almighty God. God wanted to show him, I've accepted your prayer, I've accepted you. The fire came down from heaven. And the implication of that is simple. When God has accepted your offering, it means the reward will come. And usually the reward will come in the day of trouble. Psalm 20, verse 1 to 4. Psalm 20, verse 1 to 4. It says, God remembers your offering in the day of trouble and send help to you. See, it's like when you, you are saving money in the bank. The reason for the saving is that when you are in need, you can go and withdraw. The time you need the answer from God most is when you are in trouble. I'm praying for someone here tonight, the fire will fall. So maybe your next prayer point, you want to write it down. Father, please remember my offerings. I hear my cry tonight. Remember my offerings. I hear my cry tonight. When the fire falls, particularly on the mountain top, we are told that the fire did not just consume the offering, it consumed the wood. Thank you, Father. And he asked me to tell someone that the thing you are afraid of right now is going to lead to your greatest testimony. The fire did not just consume the offering, it consumed the wood. And I've 
I believe I've explained this in the past. Every wood has fire inside it. That's why we call it firewood. There's fire inside every wood. But the fire inside the wood will never come out until there is fire on the wood. In other words, everybody has a potential for greatness. Everybody. It doesn't matter who you are now. The potential for greatness is inside you. And tonight the fire will fall and your potential will be activated. I told you when I was a very small boy, just going to the primary school in those days, when we are going to the primary school, we have a plate made of wood. They just cut a bit of plate and paint it black for us. Then we go to school and they give us white chalk. You know, the, the, about the first year of, in school, all you are learning to do is write letter A, letter B with your chalk. Uh, one, two, three, and the, your face will be full of chalk. I mean, because your hand is full of chalk, you are cleaning the plate with your hand. I was returning from school. And an elderly man saw me with the plate on my head, chalk on my face. And I said, hmm, great academician. I was a little boy. Another time I was coming from my little village and another very elderly man saw me and said, Huh, Baba Eko. At that time, I've never traveled out of my village. I'd, I've never even been to Ife. That's the closest town. But he said, Baba Eko. And I end up in Lagos. I don't know where God wants to take you, that you will reach your goal. I don't know what he wants to make you. But that potential, that potential for greatness that is inside you is going to be ignited by fire tonight. In Luke chapter 5, from verse 1 to 11, Luke 5, from verse 1 to 11, the Lord Jesus Christ said to Peter, you will be a fisher of men. Years pass. Peter didn't win a single soul. Then the fire fell on the upper room. And the fisherman began his job. It wasn't long before the shadow of Peter was healing the sick. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, from verse 14 to 16. Acts 5, 14 to 16. What made the difference? The fire that fell on, him, on Peter in the upper room. When Philip joined the church, He was just an ordinary member of the congregation. And then a day came. 
In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6, from verse 1 to 7. Acts 6, from verse 1 to 7. And they were looking for members of the congregation full of the Holy Spirit. Members of the congregation on whom the fire had fallen. And Philip was one of the seven chosen. And he thought he had been hey, promoted, repositioned. I used to be an ordinary member of the congregation, now I'm a worker. It wasn't long after that that he went to Samaria, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. From verse 5 to 8, Acts of the Apostles, 8, 5 to 8. And through him, a whole city got converted because he was full of fire. What was coming out of his mouth was fire. Demons heard him speaking and they began to jump out. And God didn't end there. You go to Acts chapter 8 from verse 26 to 40. Acts 8 from verse 26. Thank you, Father. Hmm. I, I, I think I too want to say amen to this one. That he says, there is a mountain you have been asking to move that refused to move. He said, when the fire falls tonight, the mountain will melt. Yeah. Acts chapter 8, from verse 26 to 40. Acts 8, 26 to 40. The Almighty God picked that boy, that small boy called Philip, sent him to somewhere in the wilderness. And there he met a man who was coming to Africa. Got him converted, got him baptized in the holy in, in water. And that man brought the gospel to Africa. Philip didn't know that he could become the patron saint of a whole continent. There's something great in you. You are far, far greater than you are now. Maybe your next prayer point will be, Father, let the fire fall on me. Activate my potential. So that I can quickly become what you want me to be. Activate my potential so that I can quickly become what you want me to be. When the fire falls on the mountain, that particular special fire, it consumed the offering, consumed the wood, and consumed the rocks. There is a fire that can consume rocks. And now I think I've explained that one before. The rock stands for hardship, poverty of the of the most cruel type. That's when, once, when somebody comes from a very, very poor family, the elders will say he had a rocky start. What a part of the day. Everything about him from the beginning was hardship. And if there's anybody like that here tonight, the fire will fall. Yeah. 
In 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7, 2 Kings chapter 4. Thank you, Father. The Lord says he's healing several people here tonight. And he said, particularly, there is someone who discovered recently he or she have been getting tired quickly and repeatedly. He hasn't done much, he will just get tired. The Lord asked me to tell you, he has taken care of that. In Second Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7, the Bible tells all the story of a widow who, who grew progressively worse materially to such an extent that when creditors came, you no know, creditors come in miss, she had been borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. And then the creditors came and said, now we want our money. We don't pay, we sell your children. She cried to the man of God. She, cried, she cried to the fire carrier called Elisha. And as the Lord leaves, before somebody leaves here tonight, you will become a fire carrier. You know, she woke up bankrupt. By the time she was going to bed, she had paid all her debt. The Bible said, for the rest of her life, herself and the children, they lived comfortably. In Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, you know the story of Bartimaeus. If you are talking of somebody who is poor, Bartimaeus was poor. But when the one who baptizes with fire, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. Matthew 3, verse 11. When the one who baptizes with fire was passing by, and then going, came to the poverty of Bartimaeus, he knew, even before his eyes were opened, that hey, fire is passing by here today. His garment of shame. She threw it off. In the name that's above every other name, everything that links you to poverty will be destroyed tonight. Maybe your next prayer point will be, Father, let the fire fall on me tonight. And put an end to poverty in my family forever. Let the fire fall tonight. And put an end to poverty in my life in my family forever. But the fire didn't stop with the offering. It didn't stop with the wood. It didn't stop with the rock. It went ahead and consumed the dust. And the dust is signifying the flesh. Because when God made man, he made us from the dust of the earth.
when the fire of God touches your body because you will see in the song we sang when we say fire let, let the fire fall let it touch my body my soul and my spirit my body first when the fire of God falls and touches your body it means everything that is in that body that should not be there will be consumed because according to Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 the Bible tells us that anointing will destroy yokes sickness is a yoke disease of any type is a yoke and when the almighty God touches you with his hand the hand of the consuming fire is fire when his anointing passes through you <laughs> whatever is wrong with your body you will put it right John chapter 9 from verse 1 to 7 John 9 1 to 7 thank you father I want to say amen to these two before I tell you. The Lord says, there's someone here tonight. This year in particular, Psalm 23 verse 5 shall become fully operative in your life. I'm sure you know what Psalm 23 verse 5 says. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I didn't stop there. And thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. That will be the testimony of somebody from now on. In John chapter 9, from verse 1 to 7, the Bible tells us that Jesus saw a blind man, a man who was born blind. He spat on the ground, made mud of the spiritual, and used that mud to anoint his eyes. mud became anointed because of the hand that touched it you know years ago some funny people who thought they were clever said that jesus christ was practicing mercy when he anointed man's eyes with mud and the man went to wash and came back seeing and the question I ask is, if that is mercy, why don't you also go everywhere you see a blind man spit on the ground, make some mud, and anoint the face and see what happens. But we had a testimony here tonight. That's one of the reasons why I know God has gone ahead of us. Of a sister who anointed her eyes, with the wine of holy communion and now all of a sudden can see clearly ah that god is here tonight his fire will touch your flesh and whatever needs to be repaired he will repair it In Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 to 3, 
Matthew chapter 8 from verse 1 to 3. When a leper came to Jesus Christ and said, I know you can make me clean if you are willing. Jesus said, I'm willing. He touched the leper. And the anointing of God destroyed everything that is called leprosy. Those days, leprosy was incurable. It's just a touch. Allow the anointing to flow into the body. And everything causing leprosy disappeared. Maybe you want to write down your next prayer point. And say, Father, let your fire fall. And consume every form of sickness and disease in my body. Let your fire fall and consume every form of sickness and disease in my body. You know, many a times you don't even know you have a disease until it has gone far. Many of the people that they suddenly get diagnosed with cancer, the cancer has been there. They didn't know. Every sickness, every disease that is hibernating in your body, the fire of God will fall and consume tonight. Thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell someone hmm, this may have a double meaning. He asked me to tell you your vision will begin to get brighter by the day. could have a double meaning. It could be physical vision. It could be spiritual vision. So I better say amen to that myself. And then, and then the fire licked the water. What I supposed to be able to put out fire? But that is if the fire is ordinary. In this case, the fire that fell consumed the water, licked up the water. And the implication of that is simple. When the fire of God falls, He can wipe away your tears. In Luke chapter 7, from verse 11 to 15, Luke 7, from verse 11 to 15, the Bible tells us of a, a widow, widow of Nain. She was going to bury her only son. And then Jesus Christ, the anointed one, the baptizer in fire, came on the scene and touched the coffin. She said to the woman, weep not. And from that day onward, the woman never wept because that which was causing her sorrow had been removed. In the name that's above every other name, 
Whatever is causing you to weep quietly in secret, the fire of God will deal with it tonight. Because there are some people who will smile brightly in public, but when they are alone at night, they cry. And I'm sure one of such people who have been dealt with tonight. One of such people who was saying, when will I share my testimony? And God said, uh, by this time next month, you will be sharing. <laughs> and Miss is going to wipe away all tears from your eyes. The Almighty God has the power to put an end to your weeping. He can even turn your sorrow to joy. He can turn what is bitter in your life to sweetness. After all, in Exodus chapter 15, from verse 22 to 26, Exodus 15, 22 to 26, when the children of Israel got to Mara, they couldn't drink the water because it was bitter. And God moved. An ordinary piece of wood was thrown into the water and it became sweet. When you read the story in John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 11, ah, thank you, my Lord. Daddy asked me to tell somebody, he said, that problem you are afraid of will never reoccur. <laughs> In John chapter 2, from verse 1 to 11, in the garden, the wedding in uh, Canaan, when the, the, the wedding was already on, and all of a sudden, they ran out of wine. Some of us may not know the meaning of embarrassment. And in the name that's above every other name, for the rest of your life, you won't know what is called embarrassment. But Jesus turned it around. What was supposed to be embarrassment became it's a talk of the town. Oh, we, we attended the wedding. Oh, if the, the wine they gave us at last, it was heavenly. The talk of the town would have been, we attended the wedding. Do you know? They couldn't even supply us wine. Whatever it is that is causing you embarrassment, the fire of God will fall tonight. Yeah. And when the fire fell on that mountain, if you read it up to verse 40, in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 40, all the prophets of Baal were killed in one day. All those who have been mocking, who have been saying, where's your God? After the fire falls tonight, you won't hear of them again. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, from verse 1 to 5, 1 Samuel chapter 2, from verse 1 to 5, when Hannah was singing, after God paid her a great visit, 
Hey, she was able to say, hey, 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 those of you who said that would die barren, show your face now. See what God had done. Maybe you want to write down your next prayer point. And say, Father, let your fire fall and consume everything that is causing me sorrow. Let your fire fall and consume everything, everything that is causing me sorrow. Thank you, my Father. Mm -hmm. Lord, say there's someone here tonight who said you will understand. He said, when the fire falls tonight, all the flies and cockroaches in your family will be consumed. But now let's go back to Exodus chapter 3. Why do you need the fire to fall tonight? You need the fire to fall for protection. For protection. In Zechariah chapter 2, verse 4 to 5, Zechariah chapter 2, verse 4 to 5, the Almighty God promised to build a wall of fire round about his soul. The best protection is that of a wall of fire. When people go into the jungle where there are wild animals, lions, etc., etc., and they want to sleep at night. They always light fire round about their tent. And many a times they will look out from their tent at night and they will see the eyes of these wild animals. The wild animals see them as food, but they know to get to the food, they have to pass through fire. And the elders have a saying, no matter how mad a dog is, it will not touch fire. And you yourself know very well, you have never seen a madman who died by burning. Mad people, if you see a madman and you ask him to touch fire, he will laugh and tell you, <laughs> do you think I am mad? That's why I said those who, those who are playing with the anointing of God, they don't know what they are doing. They are trying to touch fire. And that's why I can pray here, right now. All those who are trying to mess with our traditional rulers, the fire of God will consume them. Yeah. 
Because every traditional rule, as far as God is concerned, they are anointed of God. So all those who think that they can mess around with them, not only will the fire of God consume them, nobody in their generation will ever become great. Yeah. We need a fire for protection. If, when you read Judges chapter 15 from verse 14 to the end, Judges 15 from verse 14 to the end, the Bible tells us that when they brought Samson bound, to the enemies as soon as the enemies began to rejoice the fire of God fell the Bible said all the ropes binding him were burnt as if touched by fire oh yes it was fire that touched the ropes only ordinary eyes couldn't see the fire and I'm praying for somebody here today that kind of fire that witches and wizards we run away from we surround you from now on in Jesus name <laughs> I say remember the testimony of one of my daughters among the choir that kidnappers kidnapped and then suddenly they had a crying oh, Lord of uh, God of Adeboye please re help me rescue me and one of them said what did you say uh, you are one of his uh, daughters yes and he quickly he stopped the vehicle uh, and dropped her and they were in the vehicle following they were in the same gang why did you drop her he said that's bad business from tonight onward, the enemy will see you as bad business. I want you to write your next prayer point and say, Father, let your fire fall on me so that I become untouchable to my enemies. Let the fire fall so I can become untouchable to my enemies. And then you need the fire. You need to become a fire carrier. so that you can subdue any enemy. You need the fire to subdue enemies. You know in Second Kings chapter 1, you can read it from verse 9 to 17. Second Kings chapter 1, from verse 9 to 17. A man of God was sitting on the hilltop, mountain top. Maybe one of these days as we continue with the series, we might come to that. And the king sent 50 soldiers and a captain to go and arrest him. You want to arrest only one man. He had no weapons. But somehow they knew that man is fire. Be careful. And they came to the bottom of the hill and looked up and said, Man of God, come down, you are under arrest. <laughs> I like Elijah. He said, If I be a man of God, may you know I'm a man of God, and you say you have come to arrest me. If I be a man of God, let fire fall. And fire consumed the 50 soldiers and their captain. The king waited, they didn't see the soldiers returning. He sent another 50 soldiers, another captain. And they came. 
and fire consumed them too. And then he sent another 50 soldiers and a captain. And that one had a little bit of common sense. Because when he came and he saw that uh, <laughs> 102 soldiers left camp, they didn't return. I think he counted the number of uh, ashes on the ground and said, this is honor and true. Oh, oh. He went on his knees. Man of God, I'm just trying to do my duty. I'm not strong enough to say I want to arrest you. As the Lord lives, after tonight, your enemies will bow down before you. Hmm. When the fire falls, you become a vessel in the hand of God. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 8, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus promised the disciples and said, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Power. Fire power. And then you become witnesses. Many of us would love to witness. We love to win souls. We love to work for God. What is missing is the fire power. And the fire came in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. When the fire fell on the, in, uh, in the upper room, Peter preached just one sermon and won 3,000 souls. Many of you will love, I'm sure of that, to be able to go through your village or your town or your compound and just say, Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus delivers. And by the next Holy Ghost service, you need a bus to bring your converts to the Holy Ghost service. How many of you will love that? Uh, you will receive the power tonight. You see, in Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16 from verse 17 to 18, Mark 16, 17 to 18, the word of God says clearly, this sign will follow them that believe. In my name, they cast out demons. In my name, they will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. But he took the fire falling on Peter for him to be able to say in Acts chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8, Acts 3, 1 to 8, Silver and gold are fine now, but I have fire power. He said to the lame man, I command you, rise up and walk. By the time he grabbed him by the hand, the fire in Peter flowed into the man. And the man got up, walking and leaping and praising God. You know, one of the testimonies somebody will share next month is how you are beginning to raise the dead. So you want to pray. You want to write down your next prayer point. Oh, thank you, Father. The Lord said there's somebody here so very soon your enemies will hear about you and they will tremble. Your next prayer point, Father, 
Let the fire fall on me tonight. So I may become a vessel unto honor unto you forever. Let the fire fall on me tonight so that I may become a vessel unto honor unto you forever. Thank you, Father. Now, this is very important. The Lord said, there's someone here tonight. He said, you will receive the grace to be humble. He said, so that you will no longer suffer divine resistance. You know, the Bible says, God receives the proud. Maybe that has been your problem all along. But God says, tonight, you will receive the grace to be humble. So that we no longer suffer divine resistance. Let me conclude. Because tonight we are going to pray. And we are not going to pray a very small prayer. We have plenty of time. When you go through the Bible, you will find seven occasions when fire fell from heaven. And each time it fell, it fell on something. Leviticus chapter 9, verse 24. Leviticus 9, 24. Judges 6, 21. Judges 6, 21. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 38. 1 Kings 18, verse 38. 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 9 to 12. Twice. When it fell on those 50 soldiers and captain, two times. 2 Kings 1, 9 to 12. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1. Second Chronicles 7, verse 1. And Acts chapter 2, from verse 1 to 4. Acts 2, from verse 1 to 4. Seven times that the fire of God fell. There was always something on the altar for the fire to fall on. So you want the fire of God to fall on you tonight? Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Say so you must present your body a living sacrifice. Holy. Acceptable unto God. God, you're looking for a sacrifice. I am here. Let the fire fall. When he said the sacrifice must be holy, if you are a sinner and you say you are laying yourself on the altar for God, it's not interested in dirty sacrifices. That's why even if you claim that you're a Christian and you know you are not living holy, hey, you need to settle that tonight. This is not an ordinary night. 
This is truly, truly Holy Ghost night. So I'm going to give those of you who are not yet saved, those of you, you know you are still living in sin, but you want Jesus Christ to save your soul and wash away your sins. I'm going to give you a few minutes to run forward to the altar, to come and surrender your life to him. But I'm also giving that opportunity to those who claim that you are a ch child of God, but you are still living in sin. You know you are backsliding. You know you are doing those things that you say you will never do again. You too can run forward and let the blood wash you afresh. And we'll finish that before we go to what God wants to do tonight. So if you, if you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, I'm going to count from 1 to 10. If by the time I say 10, you are not already standing before the altar, I will just continue. The choice will be yours. Now I'm counting one. Two. Three. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Okay, thank you. Those of you already in front, I want you to begin to cry to the Almighty God for the salvation of your soul. And those of you on the way, you too begin to cry unto him and say, Lord, forgive all my sins. Let your blood wash me clean. I will do your will. I'm just asking you to be merciful unto me. Save my soul. Let your blood wash away my sins. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. And the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards these our new brothers and sisters and intercede for them. Pray that the Almighty God will have mercy on them, that He will forgive all their sins, that He will wash them clean, that they will become true children of God. Let's pray for them, brethren. And those of you still on the way, you have to hurry up now because I'm about to pray. I'm about to pray for salvation. 
And if anyone still wants to come, you have to hurry up now. This is your day, your day of salvation. Thank you, Father. And so, Father, we want to say thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for all the people who have come forward tonight to surrender their life to you. Father, please receive them. Have mercy on them. Let your blood wash away their sins. Save their souls. Receive them into the family of God. And from now on, any time they call on you, please answer them by fire. And don't let them ever backslide again. And if there are backsliders who have come back to you, Lord, please restore them all. Thank you, Almighty God. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now I rejoice with those of you who have come forward. I want to assure you that from now on, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. And so some brethren are coming around you. They will give you cards that I want you to fill very quickly. You write your names, your address, and your prayer requests. And they will collate it and give me a copy. And I promise I'll be praying for you. And we'll wait for you until you are finished. And then we'll continue. In the meantime, we ask the why have to please minister.
very much. Now, before you come forward to pray, I need to let you know that how quickly a wood will catch fire depends on how dry the wood is. How quickly somebody will drink water depends on how thirsty the fellow can be. At times, fire could burn through a large section of the forest. And some trees won't, won't even know that fire had passed by. Something happened last week. I was in River State. And I went to minister in several places. And one of the places I laid hands on the sick, quite a few of them. When I finished, I wanted to wash my hands. And there were two sisters. One was carrying the bowl of water with soap. The other was carrying a bowl of water, clean water. As I was washing my hand in the one with the soap, I just sensed in the spirit that the sister carrying the bowl was hungry for anointing. And suddenly I felt the anointing of God flowing into the water. And from the water into the basin. And from the basin into her hands. And suddenly she began to vibrate violently. So someone had to quickly take the bowl of water from her hand. And they quickly got her a chair to sit on. She continued shaking under the anointing. Now the interesting thing is the anointing was seen in the water. The anointing was seen in the basin. But the one who took the basin from her didn't feel anything. Huh? <laughs> he didn't. And I told my children back there a story. I have not told you many stories tonight. <laughs> of a man, quite an important man, who came to visit us. And I just felt led, after I've greeted him, to shake hands with the driver. I shook hands with the driver, and the driver began to shake violently, shouting, Oh, I emitted that. Ah, I sh oh, I shook the hand of the general overseer. Hey, and, and you could see that something was happening to him. The ogre that he brought was saying, ah, What's wrong with him? I said, you can't, can't you hear him? He said, he shook my hand. And he said, but I've been shaking your hands all these years. <laughs> when you shake my hand in greeting, what you get is greeting. When you shake the hand in anointing, in hunger for anointing, that's what you will get. When you pray tonight, if you ask the fire to fall, whether the fire falls or not is going to be determined by you. God is here. It's a very special night. Come to the altar if you want to. Come and talk to the Almighty God. Take your prayer point. 
thank him and then cry to him as the fire to fall if you are thirsty you'll be satisfied if you are dry the fire will fall it's up to you go ahead In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Holy Ghost, fire, fire, follow me. Holy Ghost, fire, fire, follow me. That day of Pentecost, fire, follow me. Like that day of Pentecost, fire, follow me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Please, 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 I want you to be quiet, be quiet for a moment. Be quiet for a moment. Be quiet for a moment. Please be quiet for a moment. The wind is blowing. Be quiet for a moment. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Receive the fire. Receive the fire. Receive the fire. Oh, Lord. Receive the fire. Receive the fire. Receive the fire of the Holy Spirit. Receive the fire. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. You can go back to your seats. Thank you, Lord.
Oh, thank you, Father. Please just, just sit quietly for a minute or two and soak it in. Oh, thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Lord. I think we'll just go ahead and thank the Almighty God for what He has done tonight. It's a new beginning for all of us, a new beginning of power, of strength, of anointing. Your hands will become hands of fire. Whatever you touch from now on will have a taste of the fire of God. So shall it be. So let's take our Thanksgiving offering and with joy in our heart. Let's dance to the nearest basket. Confident that from now on, anything that could cause poverty in our lives, fire of God will consume. Okay. Band, you can sing. And uh, ministers of God, from, you can go home from here carrying the fire along. Okay, over to you, band. I will exalt you, Lord. For thou hast lifted me above my enemies. Your banner over me is Lord. I will exalt you, Lord. Oh. I will exalt you, Lord. Jehovah. To the mountain God, your banner over me is Lord. I will exalt you, Lord. I will exalt you, Lord. Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. For thou hast lifted me above my enemies. Above my enemies, my Lord. Your banner over me is Lord. I've come to exalt you, my Father. Of fire, eh, eh, for your fire in my bosom, Jehovah, your banner over me, Lord. I will exalt you, Lord. Oh. I will exalt you, Lord. For thou hast lifted me, for thou hast lifted me. Jesus, 
Accept your offering. Yeah. You will remember this offering in your time of need. Yeah. He will send you help in time of trouble. Yeah. When you call on him, he will answer you by fire. You will never lack again. Yeah. It shall be well with you. Yeah. And as you go, the Almighty God will go with you. Yeah. And there will be all manners of miracles in your life this month. Yeah. By the time I see you again next month, you will be full of testimonies. Yeah. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let me hear somebody shout a fiery hallelujah. 